coffee done. Let's see what these vultures are eating. No toilet seat. Basically behind me is Peru. In the previous video, I went deep into the Amazon jungle along the Ecuador-Peru border. In this video, I'm taking a different route home through Sangay Park, Rio Bamba, and some back roads heading north rather than the Pan American Highway. There's a guy down there underwater. I was getting a little worried. He'd been down there for a while. Looks like he's maybe spearfishing. Yeah, he's got a spear gun. He's fishing. Hola. A couple more guys fishing out here. I just asked them. I don't recognize the name of the fish they're after, but it's something huge. Very cool. I just gassed up. The gas station is literally just a truck, like a fuel truck with a couple pumps on the back. Not a, not a normal gas station. I don't dare make this drive without stopping for gas first. I got a long way to go and a lot of mountains to climb. According to my map, it is just under, ooh, the road gets bad here. It's just under four hours from where I'm at right now to Rio Bamba, which is probably the most logical route to take home, unless I want to go back exactly the way I drove out here. So I'm going to go that way. I think it's going to take more than four hours though, just because driving always takes longer than the map says in Ecuador. The map doesn't take into account roads that have completely fallen apart or getting stuck behind a bus or a truck. This jungle, this place, it's got a particular smell. It smells, it smells amazing. I mean, it's just this earthy, wet smell. I wish I could show you a smell on YouTube. So many points along this road like this where just half the road is gone. If you're not paying attention while you're driving, it is really dangerous. I mean, if you are paying attention, it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, this road is tore up. Definitely slow driving heading back. Here's my poor little car. Car did good on this trip despite having bald tires in the front, shot rims in the back, transmission that's Definitely trying to go out and smelling like burned oil. Still running okay. Gets me where I need to go. So I just saw this little roadside stand that makes liquor and I stopped to check it out. Take a look. Tengo variedades de licores, tengo de sabores que es de, tengo de naranjilla, café, coco, tengo un vino de Jamaica, Una, un licor amazónico que es afrodisíaco, que es en base de siete cortezas de plantas medicinales, contiene chichuhuaso, cascarilla, cocobolo, clavo huasca, y entre otros también tengo ban café, que es para preparar los cafés. ¿Este es, es en polvo sí, o...? Sí, en polvo, es en polvo. Uh, ¿cuánto, ¿Cuánto cuesta para el café? Eh, este de aquí está tres y está seis cincuenta. ¿Y cuánto es de vino? El vino está a doce, también tengo... Un... Estos, las botellas grandes son a 15, el de licor es a 20 y también tengo de 12. Yo, yo quiero probar. ¿Puedo probar? Sí, bueno. Yeah. Y también yo quiero comprar el. Uh... Yeah. I'm about to taste uh, jicama wine. Vino de jicama. Jamaica? Jamaica. Jamaica. Oh, that's good. It's bueno. Sí. I like it. 
¿Y qué, qué fuerte es? ¿Qué porcentaje? Déjame ver, aquí tiene dos grados de alcohol. Tiene 10 grados de alcohol. 10, bueno. Sí, ¿Qué es esta? Esta es la... La naranjilla. La naranjilla? Sí. Ah. And... Coca. Coco. Mm, that's good also. This is wow. Muy bien. Un más tiempo. ¿Qué es el nombre de este lugar? Aquí el lugar se llama Tayusa Chico, kilómetro 37. Calusa Chico, kilómetro 37. ¿Qué es esta carretera? Es la carretera, la vía principal, Macas Cuenca. Macas Cuenca. Sí. Gracias. Sí. Gracias, mucho. Yeah, muchas gracias. So that was cool, a little artisanal liquor producer. Very, uh, that, that coffee liquor, like I wasn't planning on buying something like that. It's, it's not strong, it's only 8%. Um, it's like a strong beer, not like a, not like a strong liquor, but um, my God, it's delicious. And it's made with the coffee they're selling there, probably produced in this area. I bought a bag of coffee also. Good stuff, very interesting. That's interesting. This drive to Riobamba, I was using an application called Maps Me, which is a map that will allow you to get driving directions and navigate when you're offline. And there's an hour difference between that and Google. Now that I'm uh, back in an area where I've got cell phone connection, I threw I threw my destination Riobamba in Google Google Maps, and uh, I'm seeing three and a half hours. Maps Me is telling me two and a half. They've got the same kilometer distance, so I think the difference is Google is probably using more realistic drive times, whereas Maps Me is maybe using the posted speed limit for the entire difference distance, or who knows what. But uh, it looks like it's gonna take me a little longer than I thought. All right, so I've just uh, bypassed Macus over here. I'm on the road to Rio Bamba. From here on out, I'm gonna be climbing up into the mountains. It's gonna get Probably pretty steep, fast. So I was just driving over the pass and there's a lookout point. I'm gonna take a look and see what I can see from here. I'm at about 1,850 meters, more or less. Let's see what we got. Oh, wow. I wanted to record a bit without the truck traffic, but every time I try, another another truck passes. That river down there looks really cool. See the same river over there. I don't know if you can tell. Let me zoom in. It's really clear looking. Beautiful green river. I don't know what river that is. Very cool spot. I'm still, still on the Amazon side, crossing over this pass right here. I drop back down, but then I'm gonna clearly climb up further into the mountains, probably another, easily another thousand feet, thousand meters. 
they've got this cool lookout tower. I didn't bother climb up it because the view is basically the same from the tower as it is from underneath the tower. There really isn't anything to block the view there. Just found a cool little swimming hole. Oh, nice. Nice spot. How's the water? Water's cold. That's cold. That would be a cold swim. Cool spot though. Absolutely crystal clear. This whole area I'm driving through looks like it is actually Sangay National Park. There are a few little villages, little communities, but there's not, there's not like farms stretching all over the hills. It's all forest. It's all completely protected. Beautiful, rugged mountains. I'm really glad I discovered this drive. This is absolutely beautiful been looking and looking for some place where I could park, get out, take some photos and videos of what I'm seeing in these mountains here. This spot's about the best I'm going to find. It is epic. All these rugged peaks. They were some even more dramatic than this one here, but I, I didn't have any spot where I could uh, safely get off the road. Why are my lights on? Where are my lights on? There's a waterfall back here. But it's one of the dr most dramatic that I've ever seen. But I don't think I can get to the spot where you can see the whole thing. I mean, it falls, falls down this cliff. I'm pretty high up now. I'm at about 3,200 meters. I've really climbed quite a bit from Macus. I'm up higher than I expected to go. I didn't realize the pass was this high and it's still climbing and climbing. I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on it and see how high this pass gets. But surprisingly for the elevation, we're not anywhere near above the tree line. It's still completely forested and beautiful. And really different type of forest than I've seen in other parts of Ecuador at this elevation. It is lush. It is beautiful. Let's see if we can uh, scope out this waterfall. Where'd it go? From further back down the road, this was a lot more dramatic. You could see more of the waterfall. A lot of it's still blocked, blocked behind this rock. I don't know if you can hear me over this wind. The wind's really kicking up. I'm making a run for it. I'm getting just eaten alive by some sort of tiny biting fly. I'm, I'm not sure what kind lives at this high elevation, but it, they're brutal. So I'm getting out of here. My car is not liking the elevation here any more than my lungs are. It's hard to breathe and my car is struggling to, to climb these hills. Let's see, uh, see how much further we climb here. Hopefully, hopefully not too much more.
can see it down there. But there is some wreckage of a vehicle. These guys are trying to winch it back up. Somebody bit it. You see that? You see them towing that back up? That was not survival. I think I'm at the pass. Looks like this is the high point according to my app, my elevation app. I'm just a little bit over 3,500 meters. There's a, there's a bunch of lakes up here. I didn't know there was a bunch of lakes up here. I'm definitely gonna have to come back up here with my fishing pole, see if I can pull some trout. Let's uh, cruise past the small lake and go take a look at the bigger one here, which I think is just over this hill. Wow, what a cool spot. I keep saying that. I keep finding cooler and cooler places. I gotta hold on to my hat for the wind up here though. Bus drivers stopping to talk to each other. I'm really lucky to have caught this on a sunny day. Places like this are usually socked in with clouds and fog. This is rare. Man, I'm breathing hard. Whew. This is a lot higher elevation than I'm used to. Almost to the top. Oh, I thought it was almost to the top. It goes higher. I'm just panting. The wind's probably kicking up too much for you to hear me. Yeah, it's just the other lake. Just a small lake. changed hats so my other uh, hat wouldn't blow off in these really strong winds out here. Oh, there's a fence, but it's been cut and I can go under it. Awesome. I wonder if I'm on, I can't be on private land. This is all Sangay Park. I'm not sure why there'd be a fence there. Maybe they just don't want people walking down here like I am. Maybe they don't want people fishing here. Maybe it's not allowed. I don't know. People clearly come down here a lot because there's garbage. There's garbage and what looks like maybe somebody dumped some oil or maybe it's just decaying vegetation. I'm not sure. Mm, tough to walk without getting wet feet here. It's pretty squishy. Really squishy. Ooh. There's a bird.
All right, that was cool and all, but all right, under the fence. I feel like I really do need to get back down to a lower elevation. I'm tired of I'm tired of gasping for air. So let's get down out of this mountain. So if you're visiting Ecuador and you're, oh, pigs. If you're, you're visiting Ecuador, you're reading about places to go, you'll probably see a lot of information about Cajas, Cajas National Park, which is a, a big park in the mountains up above Cuenca. It's very close to Cuenca. And it's an amazing place, it's beautiful, but there's a lot of other spectacular parks that are they're equally amazing and worth visiting. This place, Sangay, I, you know, I think I'd heard the name before, but I'd never checked it out, never researched it, didn't know just how huge and dramatic the mountains are and how big it is, how beautiful it is. I've got to come back. I've got to come back and spend some time outside of the car, hiking around, exploring, and uh, checking out those lakes to see if I can pull some trout out of them. But uh, there are so many places like this in Ecuador, and most of them don't get nearly the visitors that a very few like Cajas get. Cajas, it gets so many people because Cuenca is expat central. That's where most of the expats in Ecuador live. And so they all talk about it. And when they all talk about it, everyone, you know, they hear about this place and it gets a lot of buzz. So it gets a lot of visitors. But you get to a place like this and I imagine if you get out of the car and you start hiking around on these trails out here, you could be out here by yourself not see another human for days. You can't do that in Cajas. I'm gonna flip this camera around again. Man, the scenery is spectacular. So I'm in my hotel room in Rio Bamba, and uh, I was having a hard time finding a hotel. Driving around, really heavy traffic right now, so just stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. Drove to one spot where there was a hotel on the map, on Google Maps, and there was no hotel there. I think it had closed down. Drove to another, same thing. I think a lot of the hotels have been the victim of the pandemic, and they're gone. But I found this place. It's a little, it's like 20 bucks for, being downtown, that's actually cheap, and it is beautiful. It is a cool spot. So 
awesome historic building. My room is small, but the building's amazing. Let me show you around this little space. Little bathroom, unlike my last bathroom, this place actually has a toilet seat and it's shut, well, it's not a shower curtain, it's a shower door. I'm sure it's got hot water because this is Rio Bamba and you can't not have hot water here. Little desk that I've just thrown all my stuff at. Bed, telephone, lamp. The place is clean. A lot of little hotels in Ecuador aren't all that clean. And I've got this little balcony to step outside and look around. So I was really struggling just driving around in this, this old town area, like I said, trying to find a hotel. I'm glad I found this place. Beautiful spot. Look at the look at the architecture. Look at these old buildings. Aren't they cool? And then a new ugly one over there. But, yeah, this looks like the place to be. And the hotel itself, the interior is gorgeous. I'm gonna go check out the restaurant later. It's called Rio Hotel. And I'm definitely giving away the Wi-Fi password. Not intentionally, but it's just right there on the door. All right, let's go check out this restaurant. It's on the third floor. I'll show you around the hotel a little bit. Helps if you unlock rather than lock the door before you walk through it. Check this out. This place is fancy. Fancier than uh, what a bum like me is used to. Full of antiques. Rio Hotel. Okay. I think the restaurant's up one more. Third floor. I believe I'm on the first floor. Let's see if it's open. At least that was open until two, but I don't think it is open. Maybe they close and then they open again later. Oh well. Guess that means I'm going out to eat. All right. Let's see what's out there. This. This is Rio Mamba. Now, I'm not super sure how safe this part of Rio Bamba is as far as walking around with my phone out, but we're gonna take a little chance while I look for a restaurant. It's kind of a weird mix of very fashionable ladies and very traditional indigenous ladies walking around town here. Strange juxtaposition. Much more historic buildings. I'm clearly in like the old town, the downtown area. Seriously, I've passed like three or four little ice cream shops, but not a single restaurant. I don't know what's up with that. A little hard to find food in this neighborhood. So I threw, threw restaurants into Google, Google Maps, and there are supposed to be some around here, but I'm just not seeing them. Not seeing them at all. one of the hotels I was looking for and didn't find. Huh, still no restaurants. Not a one. So strange. Oh, there's a little restaurant. I found a place getting the merienda, which is basically just their dinner of the evening. They've got a second of pollo, looks pretty good. A plate of rice and chicken, 
and uh, I'm having it without soup. Normally, Miranda, Marienda would include soup, just like a Lamerzo, but their soup is something I'm allergic to, so. It says the Marienda is $2.50, it'll probably be like two without the soup. And got a little juice. This is, I think it's Nergia. Kind of similar, it's almost like a cross between orange and mango, maybe? I don't know how to describe Naranjilla. Anyway, I'm excited to eat, I'm starved. I should have showed you my food before I started digging into it, but I couldn't wait. Kind of small piece of chicken. Really good ahi here though, spicy. I might have to get something else to eat after this. Something for later. All right. I gotta tell you, I devoured my food. I was starved. I haven't eaten since uh, some place called Steve's Restaurant in the middle of nowhere, somewhere outside of Sakua, somewhere in the Amazon. I needed that. I'm actually still a little hungry. I'm gonna poke around and see if I can get a snack as well. So yeah, it was two dollars without the soup. Can't complain, even if it was a little small. Still more than reasonable. Looks like I'm about to come up to an area that's still all decked out for Christmas. Let's take a look at this. What's with all the Christmas stuff? And I see snacks. Not snacks I actually want, but I see snacks. I'd say I'm definitely getting into an area where I probably need to put my phone away. I'm getting those sort of looks like you're gonna get your shit stolen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the phone away. Might call this a night here for this video, or at least uh, call it a night for myself and pick up in the morning. See you guys later.